The check is in the mail. Technology is changing the kinds and number of jobs that we have in this economy. So there's a push to give people who lose out a guaranteed minimum income. But how big would that check be and who would it come from? Questions for Lee Cowan to answer in our cover story. Sometimes a sign in a window can be a sign of the times. And the one emblazoned outside Cafe X in San Francisco says it all. Robotic coffee bar. Now, we've heard for years that robots are coming for our jobs, eventually. And maybe that's why no one here seemed particularly surprised at being handed their machine-made macchiata. That said, it is pretty remarkable. This one-armed barista can crank out about 120 drinks an hour, with few, if any, mistakes. If you're lucky, you might even get a wave. It's not a bad-looking future, unless you're a human barista, that is, in which case, this all might have you feeling a little insecure about your job. The best estimate is about 30% of all jobs that people now do will be lost to technology. But most of those will be replaced by new jobs. The real problem is that the new jobs won't pay as much as the jobs that are lost. Robert Reich was the labor secretary under President Clinton. Just like he says, even at Cafe X, there are humans being paid to work alongside technology. But a seismic shift is coming, warns Reich, that will force us to look at work in a whole new way. Work gives structure and meaning to people's lives. And if we don't have to work, are people going to become philosophers, painters, artists? Are they going to be involved in their communities, do voluntary work? Or are they just going to sit around watching television? And we really don't know that answer, right? We don't know. What we do know is the income disparity in this country will likely only grow. And that has some suggesting a radical idea. Universal basic income, a guaranteed wage for everyone, working or not, no strings attached. There are all kinds of mysteries and potential flaws with regard to universal basic income. But it's inevitable. We're going to have to seriously consider universal basic income. It's nothing new. Thomas More saw it as part of his fictional utopia as early as the 16th century. Richard Nixon once flirted with the idea. But perhaps its most eloquent spokesman was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now one of the answers, it seems to me, is a guaranteed uh, annual income, a guaranteed minimum income for all people and for all families of our country. On the face of it, this notion of just giving people free money, it sounds pretty simple and it sounds pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's not free. There are trade-offs. In order to finance something meaningful as a basic income for truly poor people would require us to find a significant amount of additional revenue. Where would we find that? Professor Laura Tyson teaches economics at UC Berkeley and says even if every other social safety net program was cannibalized to pay for it, the math still won't add up. Let's just take a simple example. $10,000 a year, 300 million people. That's $3 trillion. $3 trillion. $3 trillion. The budget is about four. So that's three-fourths of the entire federal budget. A number of places have tested the idea on a much smaller scale, mind you. But so far, economists say none of those tests has been scientifically rigorous enough to determine much of anything, which is why a lot of people are now looking at Stockton, California. Growing up, my goal was to leave Stockton and never come back, actually. There's a new mayor here, Michael Tubbs, just 26 when he was elected, having gotten the job based in part on his promise to improve the economy. 25% of our population lives in poverty, but I would argue that another 25 to 30% are just one paycheck away. He thought, what if he could provide that one extra paycheck? A payout not generous enough to encourage people to stop working, but big enough to give some financial stability. I'm not saying give everyone a Mercedes Benz or give everyone a yacht or, or give everyone a private jet to travel to meetings to. I'm saying give everyone an income floor so that they're able to make decisions to provide for themselves and their families. He partnered with the Economic Security Project, an organization chaired in part by Chris Hughes, one of the co-founders of Facebook, who's written extensively about the basic income idea. Starting this fall, 
His group will underwrite an 18-month experiment in Stockton that will give $500 a month to about 100 families and see what they do with it. Tubbs knows it's not without its risks. It's no strings attached. You don't know and have no control over what people will do with the $500. Luisa Castagnon has a pretty good idea. It would put a little bit of relief on our stress, you know, let us breathe a little bit. Um, I don't even remember the last time I took my kids to the movies. Have a good day. She works for minimum wage at a Stockton hey, Elementary hey, School hey. as both crossing guard <laughs> and playground yeah, monitor. She's not sure if she'll be one of the ones getting the money, but she hopes whoever does will take the experiment seriously. Don't go blow it on something dumb. Use it to get yourself out of debt. Use it to get yourself ahead. The plausibility of the basic income idea is still a matter of some pretty basic debate. It's a big investment with big unanswered questions. But for people like Mayor Tubbs, the economic challenges that lie ahead may be even bigger. I want answers to these questions. I want to really be able to say, like, no, I tried this in my city, and this is what happened. Good or bad. Good, good or bad. But I, being an internal optimist and knowing the folks in my city, I'm very confident that it's going to be good.